What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video and today we're gonna to be checking out the BIOS here on the Biostar Z590 GTA motherboard. Now this is the first for me. I've never actually taken a look at a Biostar BIOS, but this BIOS I assume should be pretty much the same across Biostar's entire Z590 motherboard line. Obviously some settings might be a little bit different or chain, you know, depending on the model you have, you'll have different settings. Now, this video is to go over the BIOS to give you an idea of what to expect from the BIOS, where to find specific settings, and just a basic walkthrough. We will do some very basic overclocking. Um, I can show you how to do that in the BIOS here, but again, it's just basically a walkthrough. Now, if you wanna know how to get into this BIOS, like how do I get to this menu? When you turn on your PC for the first time, just keep on hitting the delete button on your keyboard and you'll be loaded right into the BIOS. And when you get loaded into the BIOS, you should be here in easy mode. Now the thing about easy mode in the BIOS in general is that you can use your mouse as well as your keyboard. The mouse is slightly lagged, but it's not really a big deal. It's not like crazy like I've seen with some other BIOSes. So the whole idea of the easy mode is to give you kind of like all of the settings that you might want to change you know the first time you boot up your system and just to make it easier for beginners who might not want to jump through some of the other menus now i've reset everything to the defaults so everything that you're seeing should be how it is when you first turn on your system so up top right here we have our boot priority and if you have different drives installed you can easily just drag and drop these to set your boot priority. It's it's really that easy. So you can go ahead and do that for boot priority. Over here, we have information on our processor as well as our BIOS. The thing you wanna look at here, you know, if you're going to maybe update your BIOS is the BIOS version and the BIOS build date. So you wanna make sure the BIOS version that you're updating uh, to is newer than the previous one right here those things to look at. Right here, we have some switches. We can switch from AHCI to RAID mode if we want. We can switch the BIOS to from UEFI to CSM if we wanted to. Uh, Vivid LED DJ, that turns the um, RGB lighting on the board on or off. So if I just turn it off, it instantly, like I'm looking at the board here to my right, it instantly turns the RGB lights on the board off. Um, ERP control, you can turn that on or off, and UEFI LAN driver, you can turn that on or off. Over here, we have XMP. This is, again, one of the first things you're gonna wanna do when you power on your system for the first time. If you have memory that supports an XMP profile, all you have to do is just click right here, and it will enable the profile. It's really that simple, you know. If you have multiple profiles, you'll be able to, you know, uh, click through them if there's like one or two. Um, you can click through them. It's that easy. Over here, we have AI Fan, and this allows you to go ahead and set the control modes for all of the headers on the motherboard. So there's multiple headers, um, as well as the fans that are embedded in the VRM heat sinks. That's this MOS fan here you can go ahead and set those as well. So if those are too loud for you, you can set those to quiet mode. Um, they're on this manual uh, setting by default, um, but you can turn them to quiet, aggressive, you know, kind of whatever you want to do there. So everything with your fans is right in this nice little graphical interface here. And then we have just have information. So we have storage information. Um, you can see our drive that we have installed here, memory information, you know, and then CPU information. And that's basically it for the easy mode. We can also change our language, but the other languages, I think they're Chinese and Korean and Japanese, but I'm not specifically sure, but there's no other um, Western language besides English that is supported. Um, and then we can go into advanced mode. So you can just hit this F7 if you wanted to, um, or hit F7 on your keyboard. But first let's go into the BIOS flasher. Uh, you hit F12 and this will allow you to flash your BIOS. You will need to have your BIOS loaded on a USB flash drive um, to go ahead and do that. But it's nice you can, you know, it, it just makes it super easy to flash your BIOS. You can hit escape, uh, hit yes, and we'll get out of the flash utility and we're back into the BIOS. Now let's go into advanced mode because that's where all of the good settings are and that's where you're gonna wanna go if you want to overclock. So hitting F7, 
We're here in advanced mode. Uh, we have information on our CPU, memory, temperatures, things like that over here. Um, you'll be dropped into the main menu. On the side, we'll give you all of your shortcuts so you can see all of that um, right here. And this will, this down here will give you information on like what's what the setting is that you have highlighted. So like this says, choose the system default language because we're on system language. So if you're not sure what a setting does, always look over here and this will tell you what the setting will do. The first tab after main is advanced, and this is everything that kind of, that has to do with the board really. Um, so we'll go into advanced connectivity configuration. Um, you can set this up. You can set up your WAN configuration if you have a wireless card installed. CPU configuration, this is information on your CPU and then different Intel specific settings. Overclocking lock obviously is disabled, hardware prefect, uh, active processor cores, hyper threading. Again, by default, everything should be enabled the way it it's gonna run. You really won't have to change any of this. Again, I'm just going through these menus. SATA and RST configuration. Again, you can enable or disable your SATA controllers. Um, you can set up, you know, make sure like if you want to have a SATA hot plug, you can enable or disable that. You can see here that we have our drive installed, you know, right here in SATA 5. You can see all that stuff right there. Thunderbolt, oops. Thunderbolts, uh, we don't have a Thunderbolt card installed, but if we did, we can, we would see, you know, um, settings for that specifically. Trusted computing, again, we don't have a TPM device installed, but if we did, we would have more settings for that. ACPI, um, you can enable, you know, hibernation, sleep modes, uh, PS2 keyboard power on, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can actually wake system with fixed times. Um, you can see that if we enable it, uh, you can set every day, wake up, uh, you know, uh, the hour of the day, the minute of the day, the second, you can kind of do all that kind of stuff. Um, how do I turn this off? <laughs> That's one thing about some of these menus is that you can't, yeah, you, you have to go, you have to use the keyboard. Oh, there we go. No. Um, let's just set this to disabled. So we'll go ahead and disable that. So again, that is ACPI, super IO configuration, you know, serial port configurations, hardware monitor. Um, this will allow you to see your temperatures, your fan speeds and your voltages in real time. PCI subsystem settings. Um, this is everything to do with again, uh, PCI driver and all of that, uh, resize bar support. So again, this is the big thing this year is resizable bar. This is where you're going to need to enable it. Um, so you just, uh, set it to auto basically to enable it. That's all you kind of have to do. Um, it is disabled by default on this board. So you want to make sure that you set it to auto. USB configuration, again, this is everything to do with USB. So legacy USB support is, is enabled, mass USB driver support is enabled. Again, everything is you know enabled by default here. Network stack configuration, we don't have our network driver or our ethernet connected. NVMe configuration, we do have a Gen 4 NVMe drive installed so we can click through and you know see the information on our drive as well as, you know, um, you know, running tests and, and things like that for an NVMe drive. There is no secure erase um, on this. So I'm not a fan of that. I would like to see that in the BIOS, like secure erase. There's not secure erase for NVMe or SATA drives on this board. Um, Offboard PCIe SATA controller, we don't have one, so it's not there. And then this is the Realtek controller. Again, we don't have anything connected as, you know, to it. So it's not gonna show, show anything. Under chipset, um, this is everything to do with the chipset. You can see system agent configuration right here. PCIIO configuration, we can enable or disable the HD audio. Uh, PCI Express configuration is in here. BIOS lock, you can turn that on or off. ERP control, you can turn that on or off as well. You could do that in easy mode too. Onboard device, onboard LAN one. Uh, you can enable or disable that if you want. And that is everything that is in chipset under boot. This is everything to do with booting. Um, so you can go ahead and enable or disable things, enable fast boot, set up your boot priorities, all that kind of stuff you can set up in the boot menu. Under security, uh, we just have administrator password, user password, you can set up secure boot. 
and you can set up a security configuration on both of your hard drives. Finally, we go to Tweaker. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, um, so you don't have to go over all of these menus to get to Tweaker, is it says Start Page. Um, you can change that. So whenever you load into this, you can make, instead of it being main, you know, as the first uh, tab right here, you can change this to Tweaker or whatever you want it to do. I would personally change it to Tweaker because that's where all of your overclocking settings are gonna be. So for overclocking, clock frequency, this is your BCLK frequency. I wouldn't change this unless you're overclocking that way. Spread spectrum is right here. Now down here under CPU ratio mode, this is where you're gonna be doing your overclocking. If you choose to overclock, which if you have an i9 11900K, you're not gonna get all that much more out of it. Um, I would honestly recommend most people run that at stock, but if you want to overclock, um, you can do it all core, per core, or fixed. All core is just a single all, all core setting. You just set this to your all core. So if we wanted to do like five gigahertz, we'd set this to 50, and you can see our CPU target frequency right here is set to 50. We could also do per core, and we could set you know the first couple cores to like 52, 52, and 52, and then maybe this one, 51. Like, you know, you can do it however you wanna do it. Um, all core, and again, by default, it's set to auto. Here is our XMP profile. We can go ahead and uh, enable or disable our profile. Again, you can do that on the easy mode as well. Um, Memory frequency, if you wanted to do a simple memory overclock, so our XMP profile sets our memory at 3600 megahertz. We can obviously just you know go down this and see how high our system would boot. Like if you wanted to run it at 3800 megahertz, it's all you have to do to memory overclock. Now, you will have to adjust your voltage, which we'll get to if your system doesn't boot. That's kind of like the next thing you would do if it doesn't boot. But a lot of memory, you can you know at least put, this would be like 200 megahertz on it you typically can do that. So that is how you overclock your memory, kind of just basic overclocking for memory. You can do that right here, but we'll move it back to, to 3600. Under memory, this is all your timing. So again, if you are overclocking, you can tighten or loosen your timings here. Everything in this menu has to do with your memory. Voltage configuration. Um, again, this is your CPU voltage. So if you were overclocking, you wanted a strict CPU voltage, um, you can set this to override or adaptive and then set your voltage that way. DRAM voltage, again, you can set this as well. So if your you know, memory is set at 1.2 volts, if you were having trouble overclocking, maybe set it to like 1.25, 1.3, you know, you can change that however you would like all in here. So this is everything to do with voltage as well as your load line calibration. There's seven different levels. Depending on what you're doing, you can change this, but most people, I would leave it on auto. CPU power management. So this board has very strict CPU power settings. Um, when we actually went to overclock, the first thing we ran into was power limit throttling. So we were in Intel's extreme overclocking utility and it said that we were you know, current limit over or current limit throttling. So it was throttling the CPU. Um, the way to get over that is your, or get past that is your power limit overrides. These are disabled by default. So you wanna enable them. And then you have to select a power limit in milliwatts. You kinda just wanna max this out. Um, so I think it's like, I think that's maxed. Like 409,500 milliwatts. Um, that is kinda like the max. So again, power, power limit two enabled, and then we'll set that to that same value. Um, and then that will get you, that will allow more current or more power to go to the CPU so you're not throttling because of the limit that's set on this motherboard. We have our C states here. So all of your C states, you can enable or disable all of those. Thermal monitor, TJ Maxx offset. This again is set to auto. We also ran into a problem with this board where it would thermally uh, throttle as well. So I don't know why on this board, all of these limits are set so low. A lot of the other Z590 boards that I reviewed, all of the auto settings, we didn't run into any problems with our 11900K as far as thermal throttle and uh, power limit throttling, but we ran into them here. So TJ Maxx offset. 
This is basically a, a number that you set in degrees Celsius that subtracts from 125. It basically tells you over here. So if we wanna set the max temperature that our CPU can get to 115, we would set this to 10. Um, and that's kind of what I had it set at for overclocking. So I didn't want my CPU to get above 115 Celsius. If it did reach around that, it would thermally throttle. Again, it's for some reason, if you have this set to auto, that TJ Maxx is much, much lower. So you're gonna wanna change this if you run into that issue as well. And that is everything to do with CPU power management, GT power management, and then we have memory insight, which basically, if we go, it will just show you information on your memory specifically. And then if we go over to save and exit, we can discard our changes, save changes, restore defaults. We also have boot override, which I love to see. Every bio should have boot override. That basically allows you to boot to a specific device first. And then when your system does a restart, it will go through your normal boot priorities. This is great for installing Windows from a flash drive. You install your flash drive, you use boot override, and then when it install, you know, everybody walks away and installs Windows. When it restarts, it's gonna go through the normal boot priority. It's not gonna boot from that flash drive again. So definitely like to see boot override here. We also can save and load profiles and everything like that. We also, um, if we hit F10 to save, this shows everything that we changed. So before you save your settings, you get a view of all the settings that you changed. Like, oh, I didn't mean to change my, you know, max OC ratio to 52. I meant to set it to 51. You can kind of see everything before you save and exit. There's also, uh, if you hit F6, that brings up the RGB lighting on the board. You can select your color. You can select, uh, there's only three different effects, permanent, breathing, and shine. Um, and then you can select again the color and then you can select for each of the different headers on the board. And that is basically it. Let's go back to easy mode, hit F7, or I have to escape out of that, then hit F7. There we go. Uh, there we go, back here. So we are back to the easy mode. Again, this BIOS is pretty easy to navigate. Most of the settings are easy enough to find. I wouldn't say it's as refined as other BIOSes, but coming from Biostar, it's it's not bad at all. And I think any beginner should be able to, you know, see in the easy mode, I can enable my XMP profile. I can do everything like that. So if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And we'll see you guys in the next video.